Hey, good morning. All right, man, this is this is amazing. Uh, just like they all are. I mean, he, look, I don't know why he's sure. Look, I'm not the best speaker. I study. I have a hard time seeing things right or even making my mouth work the way you know my brain is wanting to put it out, <laughs> just like there. Um, so you know, I you know, I just come before the Lord. Oh with full trust, faith, and confidence in him and him alone to lead me and guide me and walk me and teach me his word himself, himself by the gift of his Holy Spirit. I have complete trust and faith in him to do that. I know he's doing that. I have no doubt. I have no doubt, period, that he is doing it. And you, people can believe that or not, you know, whatever. I, it's not me going through there. I don't even know, like I said, these what these verses, how, how they're going to, what they're going to say after I go through them and he shows me these words and look I read all these words that the possibilities of words that these things could mean in the lexicons because that's a large amount of words that it could mean it can mean many different things and I completely depend on the spirit to show me them I'm not looking through them and picking the ones I think fits right for my agenda that's not happening and I, I hope people can understand that I really do because that's not what's going on there so anyways, this verse has got some great revelation and a great spiritual revelation. And it's uh, Isaiah 51, verses 5 and 6. So first I'll read it, these two verses the way we'll see them in our Bibles. I'm using the King James Version, right? And I understand the Mandela effect, believe me. I understand it more than most because I saw it before I even knew, even heard of it. I knew what was going on when I picked up my Bible I had for 30-something years. And I was reading it continuously. You know, there were spurts where I didn't, but, you know, I'm reading it and reading it versus I've read many, many times and go back over and I see, you know, so I, I understand that, okay? I, I do. More than most. And if you say it's a figment of imagination, then you just can't see it. And I don't know what that means, but you're just not able to see it for whatever reason. So anyways, Isaiah 51 verses 5 and 6. My righteousness is near. My salvation is gone forth, forth, and my arms shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me, and on my arms shall they trust. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Okay. Is that the way it originally read, like maybe 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago? I don't think so. But we're going to take every word we can. And look, you know, and I'm not going to dwell on this point, but I think it's Isaiah 11, 6. The lion and the lamb. There's just so much residual evidence for that. And if you can't see it and look at all the, the sermons that were recorded where they actually read it word for word that are recorded that are still out there okay pictures plaques all kinds of things there's just so much evidence for it and if you can't see it and that being like one of the main ones but it's all through there so that's enough of that so anyways i understand it um here we go isaiah 51 verses 5 and 6 and i this is straight from his holy spirit and i have no doubt about it because he had to lead me through this because i couldn't see it i i prayed to him well as i was going through it i'm like look i'm not i can't see what you're trying to say but i'm here i'm willing i'm willing i'm willing to be led by you and i know you will give me the understanding of your word that you want to have in your due time whenever you want to do that and and then it just god his holy spirit just speaks to you and when you know you know you don't have any doubts. I know. Okay. So I hope I can get through this because there's some great revelation in here. So here we go. Isaiah 51 verses 5 and 6, being led by his Holy Spirit. Keeping my covenant of redemption and justification and deliverance of my kinsmen to have victory and salvation, being set free by turning back to me, leading them out to escape by snatching them out from all ends of the earth is at hand. This is at hand. Being made ready. They have been made ready to stand in my presence. Being delivered in safety. To have victory. Liberated from all moral troubles. 
to be preserved, being brought forth without condemnation for their departure and failures in the end by this, but in the end by the strength and power of my sacrifice, by Christ's sacrifice, sowing seed to bear fruit, to judge, govern, and vindicate or punish mankind collectively as a flock of sheep who have went astray and were overshadowed by darkness to hide their sins, desiring food and drink in a die, dry wilderness land, patiently looking for an expected hope of being collected all together by the strength and help of my outstretched arms to produce a yield, waiting in trust and hope to be lifted up and taken away to a fountain of living water in the heavens that flows down with pleasure and favor upon the inhabitants of the earth so they can be firm and strong in this wilderness that is beneath, that is in contrast to the promised land of God, being seasoned with salt of my word that has been dispersed and spread over the entire world. And in the Latin it means scattered as seed to be removed by rising into the air as smoke from the fire, from the fire of my anger and wrath on the land of the dead that is opposed to the heaven, full of decay and having worn out my patience by the deceit and treachery of their covering the garment they have clothed themselves with, faithlessly departing, being concealed to remain in the house of a judge who waits in ambush that causes them to fail causes one to fail and to remain down, being joined to it, being joined to it, to, to this house of a judge that lies in ambush, right? Being joined to it, to be put to death as a penalty of the destroyer by your lack of wisdom, being likened unto this thing by your relationship, being paired, being paired and joined to it as in a marriage that has been justly arranged by the, by the poison of a sting that stays within you as a swarm of small flying insects. It said gnats, but could this be talking about these nanoparticulates possibly or, or uh, the fetal tissue of the unborn or, or, you know, you know what I mean? That are in this sting as in the character of a scorpion meaning puncturing you and injecting some kind of poison. So you've been justly, this marriage has been justly arranged by the poison of a sting, and it's said of swarming gnats, basically, that are swarming, that stays within you, fastening themselves to you, stays within you, that firmly roots you, so this firmly roots you to the tree that you have chosen. It firmly roots you to the tree you have chosen, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, if you try to save your own self, right? Okay, but to have victory by the salvation of God, which brings deliverance and health, true life and prosperity, to be set free from sin by your Savior for eternity, for eternity. And that this has been veiled, it has been veiled and concealed from the sight of this judge who lies in ambush, right? Who controls and governs the mind of God's children, administering the law, trying to save themselves causing confusion, being confused and dismayed to be broken, going down, going down, and made to fear, to be made to fear, being terrified, petrified, and scared stiff, to stand still, being delayed, being delayed, left behind, right? By fear and discouragement, they have been frightened by this great size and great amount and intensity of terror that is filling the earth, that is an abolishing of this system that God is abolishing. Like he said, we're at the end of our journey in the last verse that he's revealed to me. We're at the end of this journey is what's happening. And uh, there's there's about to be a conjunction because he's said that uh, where two things occur simultaneously at the same time. And like this verse pointed out, we're going to rise as the smoke of a fire as, as smoke from the fire of his anger and indignation, right, upon this world, his judgment. So when his judgment falls, when he pours down and rains down his judgment of fire on this world, however that is, and at that simultaneously, I believe, he will catch his people up as the smoke from this fire that he judges this world with. 
Okay, we're going to rise up as smoke into his kingdom, back, back home, given that mansion, given a mansion, that glorified body he's promised, right? And could there be a dwelling place like a, a, like a home, as we kind of think here, um, waiting for us there too? Yeah, it could be, but I know that I've seen in multiple verses, not that one, but multiple verses where a mansion means a glorified body, right? And he's, he's talking about it here, to have everlasting life, to have true life, right? To have true life. Saved by him, by having full trust, faith, and confidence in him and him alone to teach you his word, to lead you through his word that is salt, that is the salt of this earth. He pours it into you and you become the salt of the earth and you're, you're, you're supposed to pour out what he's pouring into you. And this is a dry desert wilderness we're living in because we've been separated from God. We're not born into life. We're born into death and condemnation. This body is an exact contrast to God. That's why you have to be born again of the Spirit, because our flesh wars against the Spirit. It's an exact contrast to God. Wake up, the church has got it backwards. They're just teaching, parroting what they've been taught by men, translations of men. You have to, the only way you can, it's a spiritual book, the only way you can understand the spiritual truth that's contained in it is to be born again of the Spirit and have full trust, faith, and confidence in Him and Him alone to teach you His Word by the gift of His Holy Spirit. There it is. And look, I'm no better than anybody. I mean, look at me. I, I do not look like a represent, but I mean, look who He picked for His disciples and how they were as well. You know, you know, I, I don't speak the best. I don't, you know, I don't mean to dog myself out, you know, I... You know, I mean, you know, I, I do the best I can with what I got, you know. But, you know, so there's that. We're all flawed. We are all flawed, but we are all children of the Most High God. He loves us anyways. And thank God we only have to have faith as small as a mustard seed. So, you know, but but I think if you're trying to hold on to this world or try to save yourself, you know, a massive event's about to occur where, where that's going to completely throw this world into complete chaos and turmoil. And I think the powers, darkness is going to go across the powers. Everything's going to happen all at once. And people are going to be just lost and confused and dismayed. And then they're going to force everybody to take this because they're going to blame possibly all these physical forms that are left behind. This clothing, this arraignment we've covered ourselves with that is in opposition to God, right? They're going to be left and we're taken. However that is, and that's coming from me. Or could he catch our bodies up and transform them as well? You know, like he was, you know, his body was not that, you know. And like, was it, Elijah or Elijah? One of them was taken up in a world. You know, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. Those details are left to him, haven't been revealed to me yet. But I suspect possibly our, our physical form could be left here and we're given a new body in heaven, that mansion in heaven. And then they're going to say, look, after months of power outages and no news, no able to use your cell phones or anything like that, when they come back on, they're going to blame all this on this new strain or whatever is going on and say, now you have to take this, you know, whatever. Something, something to that effect. All right, so God bless you. Love and respect everybody. Amazing revelation there. He's just pouring it out. I'm being overwhelmed with it. I mean, it's just... This download of information is just uh, a lot. It's a lot, but it's beautiful. It makes me happy and excited because I know we're extremely close. Our journey's over. He's telling us. We've been made ready and prepared, right? But you, you're you firmly rooted and joined to the tree you have chose if you try to save your own life by being full of conceit of this physical form that leads you astray. It's your flesh. That's your worst enemy. Your worst enemy looks you in the mirror every day when you wake up. Look in that mirror. That's your worst enemy. It's a reflection. You know, understand that. A state of duality. It, you're full of own conceit and pride in what you've been taught by men. You cannot fully trust God to be led by his Holy Spirit. Be born again in the Spirit so we can all go home together. All right, there's that. God bless you. Love, respect everybody. Have a great day. Bye.